Full time at Goodison Park. It has finished. Everton nil, West Ham United won. The Hammers securing all three points. A second uh, win in 2021 in the Premier League for West Ham at Goodison Park. The only goal of the game coming in the 74th minute. Angelo Ogbonna um, converting a near post corner, flicking it on um, to uh, into the back of the net to give West Ham a price of three points and uh, another away win. And uh, Rio, it's... Uh, been a quite quite deserved victory, isn't it? I mean, you know, West Ham started the strongest, looked much the better team. Um, Everton never really threatened. We'll look at the stats in just a minute, but uh, you've got to say the Hammers really deserved it today. Most definitely. Um, we played all the best football, created the most chances, worked the hardest, looked the most threatening. Um, obviously, Everton wanted to come back into the game. Yeah, they're a home side, as I said, it was in a top six position. Yeah. Why wouldn't they try and eat their way back in and ask questions of us? But we cope with every single thing that they asked us. And we walked away with a yet another win, a difficult ground to go to. Two wins at Goodison Park in, in a calendar year. Kazoo, yeah, we have. <laughs> um, no. Uh, priceless winner from uh, Ogbonna at the end there. But uh, you, do, you, do you agree with Rio? It was uh, thoroughly deserved three points this afternoon. Yeah. yeah. It's three deserved points. Uh, I don't think anybody, even the worst, uh, most um, optically challenged of Everton supporters would, wouldn't be claiming anything from that one. Um, you know, it was, uh, uh, I mean, the comments we got from Grand I'll say one of those games whichever team was missing three of their best players wasn't winning. As usual, it was us. Um, yeah. You know, it's, uh, um, <laughs> so I love this one. Hang your heads in shame, you useless clots. I say steady on. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Is that one know. of those words that gets replaced automatically? You kind of get the feeling it was. No, it was, they said clots. So, oh, they did but, actually. Um, okay, fair play. Yeah. Deserve nothing here. Chance to go forth and turn a performance in like this. Nothing changes. Rinse and repeat every season. Um, bad the performance from at least half the side. Um, I mean, I haven't gone back, but obviously the Iwobi loving ceased when he went off, but uh, utterly, utterly woeful. We didn't turn up at all. <laughs> we should have just got Moyes in in 2019, shouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> can, can I, can I just point out, winning. No, no, I'm sorry, while, while we're just running through those, the, the discussion on Sky Sports is whether or not it was a foul on Antonio, uh, by Antonio on Pickford. No. Um, for for the uh, the corner that led to the goal, which uh, I, I don't think any one of us would agree with. It's one you often see getting given quite incorrectly, in my opinion. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it's, I, I, I originally thought that it, it was Antonio got the dominant touch on that. Maybe it flicked off his glove, but it was that was a close one. Um, but yeah. uh, no, it's um, no nah, good three points. Um, yeah. Very much no, so. Uh, yeah. uh, West Ham's, uh, just before we look back at the game, um, West Ham's away matches so far this season. Newcastle 2, West Ham 4. Southampton nil, West Ham nil. Dean Mosegreb nil, West Ham 2. Man United nil, West Ham 1. Leeds 1, West Ham 2. Everton nil, West Ham United 1. I make that five wins and a draw uh, from our six away fixtures so far, including wins at Man United, Leeds and Everton. Not bad, Rio, is it? No, you can't fault that one little bit. You know, we're away from home. Uh, it, it, it suits our style of play, hitting on the counter, uh, not being forced to ask the questions. Um, even at home, we, we've been undone by two late goals. Um, it, you can't fault anything about this season, really. Maybe switching off a little bit in a couple of games, but away from home, I say. Everton's never been a happy hunting ground for us. I'm just trying to find a stat when we last won two games in a row up there. Um, you, you can't be anything but delighted with that result. We're yeah. back up to sixth place now. Uh, we're, we're doing what we know we're capable of. We're not just winning games by playing free-flowing attacking football, but we're kind of grinding out results as well here. Yeah. And let's be honest, if we'd have taken our chances in our, that first 15, 20 minutes, that could have been three or four nil. Easily, yeah. Yeah. Lack of a final ball has cost us a little bit, made us like sweat a little bit more than we really needed to. Mm -hmm. 
The um, thank you, Rio. Uh, match stats for you: possession, Everton thirty-seven percent, West Ham sixty-three percent possession away from home. Uh, Everton fourteen shots, two on target. West Ham fifteen shots, four on target. Six corners for Everton, nine for West Ham United. As Rio has just pointed out, West Ham rise to sixth in the Premier League, uh, moving above Everton on goal difference. Also. Uh, joint uh, with uh, Manchester United, also on 14 points. Uh, Brighton fourth with 15, Man City uh, 17 in third, Liverpool 18 and Chelsea 19, all having played eight games. So the Hammers really uh, up amongst it, uh, you know, in the mix up there at the moment as we uh, as we look forward to a, a fairly big derby game next week against uh, Tottenham, of course, about to go and play um, this afternoon at Newcastle, which, uh, you know, is... is uh, very interesting for a number of reasons, but we'll come to that, I'm sure, at some point. Uh, going back to today's game, um, Gnome, 16 minutes uh, to go. We, we win the we win the, the corner, um, flicked on by Bonner. You know, how often is it we, we've sat here in recent weeks and, and laughed at the statistic, you know, that said that, you know, we were the, we were the most prolific team from, from set pieces. And, and yet here we are finally um, doing that. And, and it's enough to win a game. It's It's been a long running... Um... Saga, go back to the days of the bowling that the uh, the guys I used to sit next to back there, um, and uh, the late Alan and his son Trevor. Um, and whenever we got a corner, one of us would invariably say we never score from corners in the hope that that would break the jinx and we would score. Yeah. So uh, it just became one of those running little habits that you do. But um, even last season, the second half of last season, we we were taking the mickey out of, of, out of that stat every time it appeared because we palpably weren't getting anything out of it. Yes. So, uh, pleasant change, pleasant change. Yeah, yeah but, um, so nice... Nice to see. I think that's Ogbonna's first goal of the season isn't it? As, as well. Um, a, a really good time to do it. Um, talking of Angelo Bonner, um, he's, he's going by numbers, uh, thanks to Statman Dave on Twitter. Uh, 100% tackles one, two tackles, only won both of them. 94% pass accuracy, 65 total touches, four ball recoveries, two long passes completed, one goal. A solid performance topped off with a winner, says Statman Dave. Um, let's have a quick word about the defence. I mean, Everton, we, we said this, Rio, didn't we, going into the game? Everton had a 100% record, having won all three of their Premier League games at home so far this season. But, uh, you know, we, we saw the stats a few seconds ago. Um, 15 shots, 14, 15 shots, whatever it was, but only two on target. I think it's fair to say that, you know, we did a number, and David Moyes uh, did a number on his old team today, didn't he? Yeah. It looked like we altered the dynamic a little in midfield. Obviously, Declan playing a more... More defensive role than he has been in, in recent yes. games. Although yeah. as the game progressed, he did kind of move forward, more forward and get more involved. But um, Evans midfield has been one of their stronger points of their season so far. And they've been exerting their pressure and they've been grinding out results and doing incredibly well utilising the, like the players like the core, Alan. But we have nullified them today. We've made them absolute, look kind of pedestrian. From the word go, we took the game to them. We didn't let them settle. We dominated possession. And they really took time to find their feet in this game. It took until probably the early stages of the second half of them for them to have what, about two or three minutes of sustained possession. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, very technically astute by Moise today. We've worked them continuously. We asked the questions. And when our tempo did drop us, it is never, inevitably was going to happen. Yeah. But we, we come back and we didn't have... I think we we kind of ground them into submission from an early stage, and uh, it took them ages to get into their rhythm. And when they did, we just nullified them completely. Yep. Um, Can I just the... uh, yep. jump in with a couple of things? Firstly, you'll sure. notice my, my dad's come up behind me. I, I brought some shirts down, work shirts down for the wash. He's doing me ironing for me. So cheers, Dad. Um, well, there's a, there's secondly, a first for the live stream. <laughs> yeah. If, if got anyone's an got the ironing work that they need doing, uh, see Mr. Yeah. Thrower Senior uh, down yeah, there. I'm sure he'll give you uh, favourable rates, friends' yeah, rates. Very reasonable rates. <laughs> Secondly, just uh, answer to a question Rio um, posed. Yeah. The last time we won two on the trot at Goodison Park. Um, first game, we won 4 0. And the second game, about a year later, we won 2 1. First game, 10th of April, 1929. And the second game, 15th of March, 1930. And no one was so, at both of them. <laughs> yeah. 
No, no, uh, there was engineering works. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed it, known, but on the on the live chat, um, Hobo has said uh, there's uh, referring to one of the most uh, the, the more prolific KUMB forum members. Uh, uh, Hobo <laughs> said there's ironing board behind Gnome. And, uh, <laughs> Very good. Polaroid has said, uh, Gnome, give your hand a dab of the ironing. Come on. I took him to watch us play Tempin bowling today. That's his, that's his um, <laughs> getting him out of the house. So that, that's his pet penalty for having to uh, having me drive him around all day. <laughs> there you go. There you go. As I said, a, a first but, for the live stream. But, no, um, but, but, but at reasonable rates. I mean, pe people are coming on and asking if you want to do this. So, oh, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's saying how much so um, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll take it and um, just a word to Andy, Andy Welsh who's also uh, um, one of my prog mates as well as uh, a football mate if you like um, yep. and I'd just like to point out if you want to come in here Jeff only Jeff knew what was going to happen yeah yep. um, you were right you're the only one who got it right yeah, well Pre-match right. predictions. I, I'm going to go over them now. Let's let's do it. Rio went for a two-one uh, win for Everton. Uh, I went for a three-one win for Everton. No, um, slightly more confident. Went for a two-two draw. And our man there, young Jeff, went for a, a West Ham win. Um, two-one, Jeff. But we, we we won't worry about that. I mean, the fact is, you were the only one who correctly predicted the Hammers would uh, take all three points there this afternoon. So big uh, thumbs up to Jeff. Well done, buddy. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe we need to be as confident as, uh, as, as you in future. But uh, <laughs> good stuff. Uh, let's uh, let's talk. I mean, the highlights that there's not really an awful lot that we can talk about is there in the game. But I mean, I, I guess apart from the goal, the, the, the biggest talking point, Rio, from that uh, second half was the was the challenge by Rondon on, on uh, Thomas Suchek that saw uh, saw the Czech midfielder. Um, removed from the game almost immediately. For, for those who were just catching up, didn't see the incident, um, Suchek went uh, to the ground and Rondon uh, caught him in the face with it, with his studs. And, you know, some people felt that the, the, the foot movement suggested it might have been deliberate. Um, what's, what's your view? I mean, we haven't seen it again, have we, Rio, unfortunately? But, uh, you know, what's, what's your overall view on uh, what happened there? What was your take? I, I actually thought it was deliberate. Uh, obviously, looking back in slow motion... It does look worse than it does, you know. We, we saw that with the the challenge in the Chelsea game with the other, uh, last season. Yeah. Um, things can look abysmal in slow motion. Yeah. But this one, his foot did take on a natural movement on the swing back of it. He seemed mm -hmm. to linger a bit longer than it actually should have done. So yeah. for me, it was an absolute deliberate attempt to injure an opponent. And hopefully in retrospect, action gets taken. Uh, so uh, a, a certain red card for you uh, in, uh, in in that case? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, good. Thank you, Rio. No, uh, what was your view? Uh, not sure. I, I want to see it again. Um, obviously, they've moved straight on to uh, Newcastle Spurs, uh, which kicks off in about 25 minutes. And yeah, when they've got the two games like that, they don't hang around, do they? Um, yeah. But um, the, um, the, the situation that, that you get is that the first view of it, when they showed the first replay of it, it it, it did it, it looked nasty, but it, not deliberate. The second yeah. angle, angle, and again, it does it does look a lot worse than the second angle? Yes. Uh, so, but um, yeah, it, it's one of those things. Well, the referee, if if that had been um, picked up on, uh, VAR would have looked at that and. If they thought it was um, deliberate, then, um, you know, that it had gone there and then. Whether yeah. or not it gets picked up as a retrospective violent conduct, um, I don't think it will be. But um, I can see why people would say it looked deliberate. But I think yeah. that second angle was a worse angle and sort of made it look, uh, uh, you know, especially in slow motion, as Rio said, a lot worse yeah. than it was. So. Yes, it's, it's interesting how the, the, the TV cameras and the angles can make things look so different. We had that example a couple of weeks ago, didn't we, with the, the Ronaldo dive, um, where a lot of people felt that it was a foul, but the, you saw it at uh, a completely different angle, and it was quite clearly a, a, a dreadful attempt at trying to win a penalty by the Manchester United player. But uh, anyway, we are hoping, hoping, I say right now, to be joined uh, by Chalks, who is... Uh, 
joining us live from Goodison Park. Chalk's made the journey up to Merseyside this afternoon with his lads. And uh, uh, I'm told it's a terrible reception he's got up there, but he's trying to try to jump on right now. So um, we'll see if uh, we can get him in um, at some point in the next couple of minutes. But uh, um, the Pink Paloma, of course, was also up there. We might be joined by him at some stage as well, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. But uh, a, a, a vital... Yeah. Sorry, guys. Um, I'm going to have to sort of schlep off sooner rather than later, though, because... Um, no worries. I, I'm going to go. I've got to get back home in a few minutes and okay. leave them to drive home. So... Um, no um, worries, no worries. All right. I, mean, I, I think we're going to have a fairly short post-match chat anyway, because yeah. I don't think there was really an awful lot to talk about, was there? And, uh, you know, <laughs> looking back, we, we, I think we, we've got... We've, what was that, Jeff? I missed that. I just said I was going home, and every time I say I'm going home, I get this. What do you do when I say I'm going home? Yeah. <laughs> I get it every time I say it's time for me to go home. So, but um, okay. yeah, but um, man of the match. Do you want me man yes, of the match? Before yeah, well, yeah, of course. Let's let's do man of the match. Uh, we've, we've lost short, so I'm, I'm guessing yeah. we're not going to get in. But uh, uh, man of the match, no. Let's go to man of the match. Yeah. Um, some some good sort of tough battling performances. Um, and I know it's an easy cop out, but I think I'm going to give it to Rice. Um, okay. The number of times he stepped in, intercepted, brought the ball forward and started to stop on the attack. It just sort of every, every time. Um, and it's getting a bit of a cliche now, but yeah, I just wish he'd stop playing that while people will be getting to notice. Uh, Declan Rice for Gnome. Uh, there's our man, Chalks. We'll uh, we'll call you in just a in just a moment uh, if we can get you while we're trying to get Chalks uh, Chalks' stream um, sorted out. Rio, uh, man of the match for you, uh, Kurt Zuma. Thought okay. had a very impressive game at the back, uh, a vital last minute block, and yeah, I just thought he is pretty exemplary at, throughout the game. Excellent, excellent. Zuma and Rice. Um, who am I going to go for? Oh. I thought I, I don't know. There's, there wasn't really anyone who was exceptional today, was there? I mean, Rice was was pr probably the obvious candidate. I thought Ben Rama worked really hard with, for, for very little reward. Same for Jared Bowen. Again, it was another one of those performances where he did really. I think I'm going to give it to Thomas Suchek today. Actually, I'm going to give it to Suchek because um, a couple of times he went close, didn't he? Did uh, did I'm, exceptionally I'm just waiting, well. I'm Go on, just no, waiting sorry. for retro action to be taken against Suchek for damaging. Uh, matey's boot oh. space, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so there you go. So, uh, a Zuma, a Rice, and a Suchek. Um, Chalks, I was just about to come to Chalks, and he's gone again and uh, he's disappeared. So, obviously, having uh, um, bad connection problems. Uh, Chalks, if you can hear us, if if you can jump on before we end, it'll be great to uh, to, to to get you on. Um, but there he is, I think he's coming back now. Uh, Chalks, can you hear us? Chalks is currently on mute at the moment, so uh, I think he's trying to log on uh, again. But um, uh, here we go. Chalks, can you hear us? You are on mute at the, at the moment, buddy. I think Chalks might have borrowed someone else's phone. Chalks, can you hear me? There you go. There we go. There it is. Chalks, how are you doing? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kay. Uh, so, I can so hear you, mate. You can yeah, hear us. We'll you're kind of coming right. through. Um, if you can Wonderful hear us, um, let us know what you might. What, what was your thoughts on today, and how was the trip? Yeah, good journey up here. Yep. Um, I'm with the boys. We thought that uh, Rice and Ben Johnson were our standout players. Excellent. Okay, that's interesting. Um, away, I don't know what I don't know how it sounded over the TV, but the away support sounded unbelievable in there. Okay. Um, well, we, we couldn't actually hear it because we all, all had our TVs and monitors turned down, but it's, it's good to hear that it was it was really loud. Um, talk, us, talk us through the goal. Was that, was that at your end or were you at the opposite end of the ground? No, it was at our end. Um, okay. Difficult to say. Fans. 
<laughs> we're, this is, this is, really I've got to say, Chokes, this is not sure. the smoothest interview we've ever done. I don't, I don't know if you can hear us, but you're very, very in and out. Um, <laughs> did, did you get a good view of the goal, though? I mean, did, did you think there was a foul on Pickford before? I mean, we, we, don't, look, we don't look great. <laughs> was there a foul on him, was there? No, no, it wasn't a foul. No, uh, but the, the, the Everton fans and, and the players certainly claimed it was. I just wondered if you got a, a good view of it from the from the ground and what you thought. Yeah, we, we, we could see it. We were right near it. Um, yeah. It didn't... Antonio did nothing wrong. Yeah. Um, it just looked to me like Pickford flapped. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, and it was certainly a, a great finish from Bonner as well, wasn't it? All right, I, I, we're, we're we're having real troubles with with this one today. I, it's uh, it's a it, good performance. Can I just look through a tunnel? So we've got you back now. I'm back. We've got you back there. Um, how, what, um, one of the other main talking points talks of the second half was the, the incident involving Thomas Suchek and Rondon. Um, TV cameras, I don't know what your view of it was in the ground, but TV cameras suggested yeah. it might have been deliberate from Rondon. What was your interpretation of it at the time? Is it, did you see a foul play in that? Well, we, we didn't see anything. We just saw Suchek going down. And um, really, I was waiting for the screen to say there was a VAR check for sending off. Yeah. Um, but it didn't look like any of the players reacted either. Yeah. But he's, I mean, when they came over at the end of the game, he looked like he had a bit of a nasty cut over his eye. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Um, it was down there. Sorry, got lost, got lost a minute. We're going on <laughs> Pinky's directions. All right. We well, should right. be good. He, know, he normally knows where he's going. Uh, no, I mean, I, I think the thing was, it was, result. yeah, I, absolutely brilliant. I, I mean, is, how, how's your day been overall? I mean, you managed to get up there all right in the end because I know you, you had some travel difficulties initially. Yeah, no, we um, we got up here in the, in the car, um, four hours. Not bad. Happy day. We, we've, we've, parked, we've parked where Pinky's told us, so I'm fully expecting to get back and there's going to be no car there. <laughs> 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 well, look, I hope you and the boys have a safe journey home. I mean, it's certainly been a uh, you know a, a, a day to remember for, for West Ham. We were saying during the stream, it's it's not often we go up there and and come away with all three points, but you know we've done it now twice inside a calendar year. Of course, having one up there in January. Um, how, yeah, how was brilliant. how was how was the away crowd for you? I mean, it was a good atmosphere I'm, in there today. I've just got to say one more. I've just I've just got to say one more thing, Gray. Yeah, go on, buddy. Seeing them, um, Colin, that was humbling, mate. That that bloke, he did the London Marathon, didn't he? He did last week. Yeah, yeah. Mate. That man's yeah. an inspiration to all of us. Yeah, um, um, really is. And for, for those, to to yeah, top man. So for, for those, for those of you who aren't aware who Chalks is referring to, we're, we're talking about, about Colin Wells, who. Uh, Post has wanted as has been a member of KUMB's forum for, for many, many years. Um, he was running the London Marathon uh, last week um, on behalf of the Parkinson's uh, UK charity. Um, uh, it's, it's a condition he's suffering with at the moment. And despite that, he uh, he, he did the, the entire marathon. I think I think he actually walked most of the, the 26 miles with his daughter, Louise. Uh, as Chalk says, absolutely inspirational, a wonderful, wonderful uh, Fella, and if any of you do have the opportunity to do so, if you look at the KUMB.com <laughs> Twitter feed, there is a link there to uh, Colin's um, um, fundraiser, which you can uh, which you can uh, put a few bob in if you've uh, you know if you're in a position to do so. But uh, I, I, lovely to hear he was up there today, anyway, Chalks, and I hope I hope you thoroughly enjoyed the game as it sounds like you all did. I think we, are I mean, it's, it's always over West Ham, and it? it gets nerve wracking. Yeah, um, you don't know whether. You don't know whether we're suddenly going to concede and then collapse, but I think maybe that's just the old West Ham, isn't it? You I know, that's it... the West Ham we've supported for 40 odd years. Exactly. And yeah, we, we're just different. And I'll tell you the other thing I love, Bray. Yeah. Is the absolute, every single one of our away support was singing David Moyes' Claret Blue Army. Yeah. And you can see how much it means to him when he comes off. Yeah. yeah. You know, he walks past us and the grin on his face, even before the game. 
So it's not just a win. He, he knows, he knows from us supporters how much it means to actually sing someone's name when it yeah. comes to managers. Yeah. We don't do it because we've had some tricks. Well, it's it's been a, is it, was it Pardew perhaps who was the last manager to, to, to have the you know his his song? But I, I just Charles, I just want to go back to something you said a little while ago because Ben Johnson. Just a quick word about Ben Johnson. There was a few people on the uh, on the on the forum who were being quite critical of him, and you know we were we were kind of saying during the stream, well, we haven't really seen him put a foot wrong. He seemed to be doing a perfectly capable job out there. You you had him down as as one of yeah. your, as, as your man of the match today. Absolutely, I thought he. I mean, Declan, look, Rice, you know what you're going to get. And he he does take the piss. He's that good. Yeah. But yeah. Ben, ben Johnson, considering he's coming in and he's filling in, he was fucking outstanding. Yeah. He didn't put a foot wrong. Yeah. I wonder what it's some tough. of these people on the forum what are watching at times. But Yeah. Yeah, no, it was, uh, we, we, we thought he'd done a good job as well. And obviously keeping, you know, keeping a clean sheet at Goodison Park. And as we were saying, this is a team that have won every game at, at home so far. Yeah. And they had two shots on target today. So the entire defensive unit did a, did a fantastic job. But uh, and, yeah, so... Um, and great. As we said... Um, <laughs> We've been cars there. <laughs> okay. I, I might have to get the bleep machine out with all this all this foul language, you know, by the way, again. For, oh, for sorry, mate. <laughs> we publish this. That's all right. I'm, I'm, I'm just delighted to hear your motor's still there and in one piece. All four wheels still there. Yeah, there, there, there's no bricks I, I around. So. I'll like check, check the back ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, you, you guys have, have, a, have a safe journey home. Um, but before we, before, before we say goodbye uh, to you and the boys, let me just get uh, a quick word from you on the, on the, on you know, the next week's fixtures. Uh, two home games coming up in the next seven days. Uh, a home to Genk on Thursday night in the Europa League, and then uh, a home to uh, Tottenham Hotspur next Sunday. What's your view on those two? Do you think that's going to be an, another couple of wins for uh, for Moyes and the boys? Yeah, Genk, Genk will be a harder game than Tottenham. Yeah, Tottenham are nothing. Not worried about that one at all. No, <laughs> I'm so happy. Oh, oh, just, listen, I've just got to right. get out of here alive. <laughs> All right. Well, look, uh, if, if you need to dash, feel free to do so. We're going we're to wrap up shortly anyway. But, yeah, I'm uh, going to shoot now because I'm getting in the motor. All right. No problem. Thank you for joining us. Really appreciate you coming on. Have a safe journey home and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll chat again soon, buddy. Anyway, you take care. Yeah, cheers, Greg. Safe right, journey, well, guys. There you go. See you, See you later, fellas. Yeah, Tell her. Tell her, boys. Well, there you go. Uh, Chalks, uh, the, 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 the whole Chalker family there uh, joining us live from uh, Goodison Park. <laughs> In fact, going to be a very happy journey home for uh, the boys, uh, no doubt, this afternoon. No, nah, they'll, um, they'll be asleep in five minutes. <laughs> but uh, right, I'm signing off. It's not going to be much sleep in four. <laughs> right, well, there you go. Later, Take care. Cheers, buddy. Well, there you go. Cheers, there you go. Chalks uh, joining us uh, live, live from Goodison Park. Part of the uh, the away crowd Can't that's turn uh, the thing off. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Beep. The thoroughly enjoyed the <laughs> thoroughly enjoyed that uh, that win uh, down there this afternoon. Um, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up now. Um, we, we've pretty much covered everything that needs to be talked about. We're gonna do so by looking ahead to, as I said, this week's games. Two matches Thursday night at home to Genk uh, in the Europa League. West Ham's third. Uh, Euro is it third or fourth? Third, isn't it? Third Europa League uh, game. Hammers uh, looking to maintain the maximum points and then Tottenham at home on Sunday afternoon don't know where they are in the league now they're playing aren't they in in a minute um but uh two uh two relatively big games Rio for the Hammers uh coming up how do you see those going I think Thursday night we should be favourites against, against Genk yeah um what I've seen of them and know obviously the analysis given again by Will Coe and the boys on the, the podcast uh suggests that they leave themselves very much open. They play on the front foot a lot, open, uh, leave a lot of gaps for us to exploit. Yeah. We're, we're a better side from the better league. We should kind of breeze through this one. Uh, so that's probably going to be a 1-0 defeat, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, hopefully we can launch the win on Thursday night. Nine points in the group. That will put us in a really good, solid setting that we can breeze through this group without much problems. You want to win it to avoid the extra game, extra round. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm quietly confident about Thursday night. Okay, Sunday night, and Sunday, Sunday afternoon is um a little bit, you know, apprehensive. You know, London derbies against them lot of all people. Um, they're not in great form. They're more than beatable. I'm just worried that the exertion from Thursday may take its toll. 
I don't know if we're going to rotate the squad as much as potentially we really need to. Yeah. So potentially it's going to be a much tougher game. Um, and obviously the rivalry does play a factor. Yeah. Players don't like to admit it. Managers don't like to admit it. But the anxiety and the tension, the atmosphere, it does filter through onto the pitch. Yeah. It's very hard one to call. Uh, but I'll be happy with just the five or six nil win. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take that. But to, yeah. you, you, you're confident of uh, back-to-back wins this week, suffice to say. Uh, I wouldn't say confident because okay. if I if I say I'm confident, it will jinx the whole lot. <laughs> but I'm, uh, I'm edging towards the the positive side rather than the negative. All right, good stuff, good stuff. Well, look. Um, we have been joined by a, a, a second uh, member of the team from um, uh, Goodison. The, the Pink Palermo is just about to join us on the stream now. Uh, no, I know you have to get off. I know you have to disappear. Um, and I do also notice you, uh, Mr. Mr. Thrower has been replaced by, by Mar Thrower as well in the background there. Um, so we, we've had the whole family on today. We've had the, we've had the whole Chalks family. We've had the, the whole... Um, um, there she is. I didn't see the board go up. This <laughs> was your ball go up <laughs> <laughs> substitution. But, but, yeah, yeah. The other brothers, the other brothers at home, but we don't talk about him because he sports Liverpool. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we've all got problems. So, all right. Um, uh, Golden, um, this week, uh, Genk on Thursday, Tottenham on Sunday. What's your, what, what's your thoughts? What are your hopes? Um, I think we'll win both. Um, I can see what Rio's saying about Thursday and Sunday, but you've got to remember that. Tottenham themselves will be playing in the Thursday night Isthmian League. Um, so they they too will have had a game. I'm not sure if they're home or away. Yeah. Um, yeah, they've been playing teams like, um, you know, sort of the might of Gibraltar and things like that. But, um, uh, and you've also got the thing where you've got, you know, like, like, like a cup tie where these, these minor teams raise their game against you. So it's always that. You can say that but I think we'll win both. Tottenham game might be a bit harder to win than, than the Genk one, but I still think we'll win both. All right, good stuff, good stuff, everyone. Confident um, ahead of uh, ahead of next week. Well, I mean, if you need to take your leave, um, Gordon, by all means, yeah. do so. It's been uh, go. it's been lovely having you and the team on uh, on the stream today. <laughs> um, so goodbye to you and and Jeff and Mum and Dad as well. Uh, take yeah, care, all yeah. of you. We'll uh, we'll we'll, uh, we'll catch. My phone, my, my watch is talking to me. I don't know why. Um, but uh, yeah, take care, everyone, and uh, we'll, we'll see you all again. Soon. <laughs> Mine, there you go. Mine, there you go. Um, yes, there it is. Thanks a lot. Um, we are we are making a substitution of our own, actually, as you can see, because uh, as uh, as as uh, Gordon and uh, family disappear uh, off of our stream, we are being replaced by the Pink Palermo. Um, Pinky, can you hear me? And there it is, Rio. Look, with classic timing. Um, he's it's like Eurovision, isn't it? In, in the seventies. <laughs> uh, well, Everton certainly got null points this afternoon, um, but yeah, I'll, it is a bit like that, isn't it? It's uh, we're, we're having problems today. This normally only happens, of course, when uh, we're playing home games, and uh, you know we're trying to get older people at the London Olympic Stadium when it's impossible to do so. Um, normally on our, on our away games, uh, we're, we're absolutely fine getting people to come on. Uh, Pinky's disappeared completely uh, for the minute, so hopefully we'll uh, we'll we'll get him back. But I, I'm just I'm just seeing Rio on my screen. Uh, they're showing uh, shots from St James's Park this afternoon. We've just seen pretty much every famous Newcastle fan you can ever think of, including Ant and Deck, have, have turned up to the to the game this afternoon. I guess uh, Steve Bruce might be wondering why they haven't bothered. Uh, you know. Um, when they were rubbish, as, as it were, which, uh, you know, they uh, could have been a, a, a beneficial term. But let, let's, let's touch on that briefly while we're just hanging around to see if uh, Pinky does pop on. What's your view on the whole Newcastle thing? Of course, that's all erupted over the last couple of weeks. Now technically the, the wealthiest club in the world. Um, what do you make of the uh, the, the, the takeover there? Uh, so I've got a, had a little bit of a kind of inside track on it because uh, one of the people involved comes into our place of work every now and then. Okay. Uh, let's take away the politics side because politics and sports should never mix. Um, and it'd be hypocritical of us to point fingers at Newcastle United doing business with Saudis when our government does so. So that's my last word on that. My hope at the moment is that Newcastle get relegated. Every single player in that squad knows they're on borrowed time. 
They might be playing for their footballing futures. They're not playing for their footballing futures at Newcastle United. They're playing for their footballing careers elsewhere. Yeah. Now, how that's going to affect morale, team performance in the future, we just don't know. But every single member of staff, player-wise, manager-wise, is on borrowed time. I think it's going to have a negative effect in, in the interim. Uh, once the money starts flowing through and they attract a better caliber of player, it's going to be a different matter. But I think it's going to take at least three or four years before the wealth starts to filter through and kick in and have visible effects on the pitch. It's going to be a rebuilding job. If they're on about getting Frank Lampard in as manager, which is one of the rumours, mm. it could be an ideal choice because he, he's had a successful period as a championship manager. Yeah. Derby. Because that's where they're heading. Yeah. And uh, they've got a rebuild the job to do. They've got a rebuild job to do to get out of the championship when that happens, because I'm pretty adamant it will do. And they've got a rebuild job to get out of the championship, which we know isn't easy. Once they do get out of it, which they obviously will, because they've got the money to throw at it. They've got to cement themselves in that Premier League, first of all. And, um, yeah, it, it's a complete change of culture of that club. I mean, I, I haven't got much against new cults, you know I mean? I'm a big fan of Azen and Pep, you know. Mark Knopfler's a nice bloke. Brian Johnson, ACDC singer, comes to Newcastle, lovely fella. You know, <laughs> we've got nothing against Newcastle, the town, the city. The entire support, different issue. But every time I've been up there, I've had a thoroughly entertaining weekend. And, you know, it's nice to see someone potentially upset the apple cart. Yeah. Because we're sick of the big five or six, as, they, as they're so called. Now, yeah. yep. Um, it's just I don't think it's as plain sailing as everyone seems to think it's going to be. And uh, the likes of Liverpool, City, United are all kind of terrified about the prospect rather than thinking long term it's going to take five or six years for this all to come into play. Yeah, it's, I think it's, a, it's it's an interesting point you make because I think you're absolutely right about the players. First of all. I mean, the fact is, all those players who are there now being cheered and by fifty thousand, uh, you know, Newcastle fans, including as I said, Ant and Deck, who appear to have uh, re- rediscovered where St James's Park is. Uh, as you say, they know they're going to be out on their ear uh, within a year or two, or when their contracts expire. And of course, if Newcastle, with this current team, and, and, and you know, there's no evidence that they can get out of what, the, the trouble they're in, who's going to want to go there in January? I mean, they're talking about, about buying these these enormously talented players, but who's going to want to go and join a club that's going to be, say, you know, entrenched in a relegation battle, regardless of what happens, however good they are, that's all, all they're going to be looking at this season is to get out of that, isn't it, and try and survive. Yeah. And I, I kind of wonder who's going to want to go there. And, and so you're you're then looking at summer, and I, I just wonder if... It, 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 do you know what? It kind of reminds me in a way. Remember when we had um, Tevez and Mascherano come in in... Uh, you know, on, on transfer deadline day, 2006. And, and we all thought all of a sudden, Kira Jurabchian was was all over the news. Um, we all thought this was it. This was this was the start of something beautiful at West Ham. And of course, you know, it, it couldn't have gone any worse, really, could it? But it kind of reminds me of that in a way. Do, do, do you get that? It's, you know, it's, it's kind of a similar scenario. And I, I kind of feel... Now, I, I'm like you. I, I, I like Newcastle. I've got lots of um, happy memories of, of, uh, of the place and still got some friends in that part of the world. But uh, I, I kind of hope it all crashes and burns as well in a way, which is, you know, I, you sort of want the, want the worst for your opponents, don't you? But, I mean, let, let's bring this back to West Ham. What does it mean for us, uh, the, you know, this extra? Is it, is it just another club that we're going to be battling against in that, in that top five or six? And, you know, and does it, and does it push West Ham further down the, the footballing pyramid? In, in theory, it pushes every single club uh, a further spot down. Right. But football never, it's, it's different in the Premier League era. era. Um, football never stagnates normally. And the top four or five constantly evolves. Yeah. Who are the top dominant clubs in the early 70s? Yeah. Not the same clubs as now. I mean, obviously Liverpool are, but even they went 25 odd years without a league victory. Yeah. You know, they, these things evolve. Um, I just think Newcastle and Manchester City financially should be dominant in the future. But there's no guarantees. And like we said, it's a massive rebuild uh, before yeah. anything st- like kind of kicks off in Newcastle. And uh, so I, it's, it's going to take for me at least three or four years before any kind of positive moves 
come to fruition for that that particular side. I okay. just think it's a car crash waiting to happen initially rather than an instant fix. Yeah, I, I think if any clubs, you know, likely to do that as well as West Ham, it is Newcastle, isn't it? But anyway, uh, enough of enough of the Geordies in the northeast. Um, we, we are joined by uh, another one of our own, uh, who is now uh, safely sconced in his vehicle by the looks of things, uh, making his way back from um, the blue half of uh, Stanley Park. Uh, we are joined by the Pink Palermo. Uh, Pinky, we were just about to wrap up, but uh, I'm, I'm glad you've managed to come on. How are you doing, buddy? You everything okay? Yeah, very good, thank you. And and that was the very definition of a hard-fought victory this afternoon. Yeah, uh, and a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant three points for West Ham United this afternoon. Uh, how many times have we seen it over the years? One nil up with a few minutes to go, and we capitulate. We concede the late goal, and yep. sometimes two late goals. You know, to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. But David Moyes has definitely put some resilience into this team. And yeah, bearing in mind, we utterly dominated that first half today. I mean, I can't recall ever going to Goodison Park and bossing 45 minutes of football the way we did today. Have um, you seen these showed... stats, uh, by the no, way? No, I've not seen the stats. For the... No, no, go on. OK, well, the first half, if, if I remember correctly, we, uh, we enjoyed 69% of possession, which I think is, as, as we remarked at half time. Is, is unheard of in, in this modern era for West Ham United, especially, you know, in, a, in an away Premier League match, uh, which, which backs up what you're saying, of course. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I asked uh, Nigel, who stands next to me, and he had, he had us down at 103%, but I'm not quite <laughs> sure how he figured that out. But uh, but I think you know, I got the gist of what he was saying. And, and you know, we, we bossed it, but for all our control... I actually felt Everton had the best chance of the first half, which they failed to convert. And uh, thankfully they did because, you know, it's, they're the sort of team that if you give them the lead, yeah. it's very hard to wrestle something off them then. But uh, but today, you know, you have to say, Mikel Antonio again, yes, again, you know, there cannot be a defensive lineup in the in the league that want to play against him yeah. because... He, he gave everything today. And, and all I ask from any West Ham United player is, is effort. You know, I, I can forgive a, a misplaced pass. I can forgive, you know, a finish that isn't quite as good as you'd want it to be. Yeah. But as long as they put in the effort. And Antonio today, I thought, was superb. I thought Deckers, again, you know, what more can you say about the young lad? Yeah. Um, he's, he's just gave another consummate performance there today. Um, I believe it was Rondon that gave... Uh, Suchek a bit of uh, bit of afters, wasn't it? Well, look, I was going to come on to that in just a minute. If we, we could do that now, actually, as, as, as you mentioned it. Be, before I do that, I'll, I'll just point out that Newcastle are already a goal ahead uh, against Tottenham. Uh, they scored just after two minutes up there. Um, yes, it was uh, it was Rondon. And now you, of course, won't have seen the replays uh, having been at, at the match and and just uh, seen it live. But uh, there there is a, an angle. Um, which uh, I think Rio and I both uh, both agreed you know, tends to show that it was quite a deliberate action by Rondon. And, and having looked at that, it's difficult to see you know anything else. Now, you've obviously only seen it in real time, but what was your view? My my view is you know, a, a bit a bit of afters, um, but you don't see the detail um, until you get home and see it on the telly. And I'm afraid um, I'm not sure what the rules are on that. I think it's the case if the ref doesn't see it on the pitch. Um, can it be reviewed? Because it really should be. Um, yeah, it's naughty. It's naughty stuff. And if you think for professional players, you know, you, you can only categorise it as a deliberate attempt to hurt a fellow professional. Right. And that's not on. It really isn't on. And because uh, I'm assuming Suchek will be out for Thursday. Um, you know, which is, <clears throat> well, you might argue, well, not not necessarily a bad thing. He could probably do with a, a week off in some regards, but um, but not like that. So so for my money, very very naughty by the Everton lad, and you know, dare I say it, it's a club that's got a bit of a reputation for that over the years, hasn't it? A bit of the uh, you know school of science. Don't make me laugh. More like school of dark arts. Yeah. Um, yeah. If, okay. If you want my view. All right, no, no, fair enough. That's good. It's, it's, it's good to hear. Refreshing. I mean, we had Chalks on a few minutes ago. We kind of agreed. Uh, I think, um, you know, it also felt it was naughty, though he didn't really see it too too clearly. But um, one thing you will have seen um, very clearly would have been the goal. Now, there was some... Um, the, the TV TV um, after the game were, were talking about whether or not it might have potentially been a foul by Mikhail Antonio. 
on um, Pickford uh, for the for, you know for, for the incident that, that led to the corner. Don't think there's any suggestion it was. I think they were just trying to you know see something that wasn't there. Um, but tell me about your view of that and also the goal itself, which of course was West Ham finally scoring from a set piece after all this time. Yeah, and and, and remarkably, you know, and excellent news for me that that shuts up Jeff to the right of me at every game because I'm not joking. From the third minute today, it was. We never score from set pieces anymore. Yeah, but he's right, isn't he? I mean, Jeff Jeff would have been right, yeah. He's he's absolutely on the money. And uh, but no, in in terms of what what, what led up to it, no foul on the keeper anywhere to be seen. Um, You know, and and again, when you have the type of game that Antonio does, a lot of refs will cave into that that sort of thing. Um, (laughs) But but, you've got to say, Set pieces, we've, we've seen it from Brentford in recent weeks, the importance of them and having little routines worked out. And I don't know if you saw the Brentford-Chelsea game yesterday. There's, there was nothing else on. I, I searched 74 channels, and that was the only thing I could find to watch. Um, <laughs> and uh, But I saw Brentford time after time yesterday from yeah. set pieces exploit uh, you know what, what they had. Um, and it's such an important part of the game. So for us to get the goal from it, very, very pleasing indeed today. And uh, yeah, you take that all day long because a quick, yeah. you know, scoot around the away regulars before kickoff, you know, you get your predictions. What would you take, lads? Almost to a man, we were all saying we'd take a point. Hang on. Yeah. Uh, sounds like uh, <laughs> um, Pinky's had to hide the camera uh, briefly there. Um, you all right, buddy? You okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I mean, how unlucky would you have to be to be the one person caught on Merseyside? Um, you, know, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, you know, it wouldn't be the week to have bought a lottery ticket, would it? But, um, but... well, look, um, we, we were, I mean, Rio, Rio, you pointed out the fact, didn't you, that I, I think you, you mentioned the Brentford game. I, I, I asked whether, you know, we'd kind of really, we, we were talking about the, the short corners uh, that Cresswell and Four Nails were taking, weren't we, Rio? And you were pointing out that this was something that started a couple of weeks ago against Brent against uh, uh, Brentford, that, you know, we, we had started to vary that, hadn't we? Yeah, we've all the dynamics the last couple of games, obviously because the options utilised last season have been coming running dry, uh, not been quite getting the same results, obviously. Um, I said, I'm not a fan of it because it takes an attacking player out of the centre of the ball coming out of the area yeah. and lose another option now. But um, the actual delivery for the, the, the goal, fantastic by Creswell, right on the money. Obana gets his head there. And as I said during commentary, the, the biggest bonus for me was seeing Mr. Angry Jordan Pickford get made to look like an absolute mug because... He was absolutely nowhere for the corner. Don't know if it's mind games because he's protesting before. Apparently, he's been protesting after the whistle as well. Um, he really needs to kind of calm down a bit because he's going to have himself a coronary sooner or later. <laughs> uh, yes, I mean it certainly seemed like a valid goal. And of course, you know we're talking about variations in the corners, but it was a, a pretty direct corner to the near post from from which we scored. But uh, we, one thing we couldn't agree on, um, Pinky, was man of the match. Now. Uh, Gnome went for Declan Rice. I think he might have gone for Declan Rice every week so far, and, and with good reason, because he's been absolutely, you know, exceptional pretty much week in, week out. Uh, Rio, did, you went for Zuma, was it? Yeah, Kurt Zuma. Kurt Zuma. Uh, I went for Suchek, and Chalks, who we had on uh, a few moments ago, Pinky, went for um, Ben Johnson. Would you go with any of those, or would you go for someone else entirely? I, I, I think they've all got shouts, and I think, yeah, yeah. I, I praise young Ben Johnson because his distribution today was good. Um, he's very composed today, and you know he's a young lad. You know, and you go you go away to Goodison Park, um, you know, and uh, he stood up to it well today. So he had a, he had a decent enough game. I mean, my two picks would have come down to either Antonio or Rice. Yeah. Um, and, and for me, I'm, I'm going with Mikel Antonio for the simple reason: on two occasions this afternoon to relieve the pressure. He chased the lost causes and battled and battled and battled and, and occupied three and four Everton players who yep. were trying to wrest the ball off him. And, and it just, just for a few moments, it relieves the pressure on, on our end. Yep. And your teammates look up and they see that and go, 
thank God we've got Antonio in the team because just that, that sheer work rate. And you look at, you know, people bang on about Sebastian Haller and all the rest of it. And all look at his scoring fun for Ajax, whatever it, what it is. I don't care if he scores 100 goals for them. He didn't run and he didn't work for us. Michael yep. Antonio, I don't particularly care if he never scores another goal for us. But if he works and runs the way he yep. did for us today, he, he's getting in that team shape. So for today, he was my man of the match. But I'd also say Declan Rice, what, what a pleasure. What an absolute pleasure it is to watch such a complete midfielder today. Yep. Up and down the pitch, you know, attacking at one end, tracking back at the other, making vital interceptions, challenges. You know, for, for, for any any of us who are lucky enough to go and watch him in the flesh week in, week out, cherish every single moment because he is a fabulous, fabulous footballer. And he had yeah. another very, very good game today. Yeah, he did. They played exceptionally well. And I've got to say, I think, you know, that that's the first time that uh, when, when we've got the regular four on the, uh, on the, uh, on, on the, um, stream that we've all disagreed and, and with Chalks in there as well today, that's five. So uh, I think that's a first when we've had five. But it, it kind of goes to show in one sense, I suppose, that nobody really excelled, but it also shows that everybody played their part this afternoon. I mean, and, and again, you could have quite easily gone for um, Jared Bowen, who, who ran his socks off, uh, you know, played really, really well. Unlucky, could have had a, a goal or two of his own. Side Ben Rama, you know, didn't get much luck today, but as as, as Rio and I were, and Noam were pointing out throughout the stream, was was working like a Trojan um, to, you know, to track back and put in tackles. Um, so it's it's it was a bonner, of course, the, the the score of the goal, who's normally the first player up um, for a, a man of the match award. So really, everybody had a shout, which is which is good stuff, I suppose. But. Um, um, before we move on, Rio, have, have you got any questions you wanted to to put to Pinky as as our as our man at the ground this afternoon? Um, no, that's, I know Chunks mentioned the atmosphere there. I mean, also we can't hear it because we have to have the volume off. But um, I'm presuming, and I'm going to just re reiterate, Pinky, that's our first back to back win at Goodison since 1930. I presume everyone's oh. in fantastic voice. Yeah, I mean, it's good. And, and, and thank you very much to uh, young Danny Dyer um, for providing the away support with a couple of good, nice songs now for uh, Jared Bowen, which, um, you know, I, I can imagine her old man will be watching games with the volume down for some time. Maybe he'll tune into Eyes Up Mother Brown where he can't hear the chants. But, um, <laughs> but uh, yes, you know, there are a couple of choice ones today, which I can't repeat, bearing in mind this is a family show. Um, <laughs> Didn't but, stop talks. Uh, <laughs> well, well, yeah, indeed, indeed, it's you know he 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 can be I don't know he can be chubby brown to my uh, you know my Keith Chegwin or, or something like that. But um, <laughs> but no, I, I, I mean very good atmosphere today, very well attended by by West Ham. You know, two o'clock on a Sunday, not the most popular kickoff time in the world, and yeah. uh, a lot of happy people there because, as I said before, kickoff, you know, all of us are thinking. A point is a good result at Goodison. To yep. come away with all three, it kind of cancels out the disappointment of the Brentford result at home. Um, you know, and it's the sort of thing, if you have a, a, a soft reversal at home, you need to get back in the saddle again, fast as possible, and regain some momentum. And I think we can look forward to Thursday night against Genk um, with, with good heart. And going to the lane next week, I mean, there'll be no Son in their team. They've obviously got a fading Harry Kane uh, in their lineup, and you know, again, I, I've said it before, Gareth Southgate, how he must bitterly regret now, bitterly regret letting Mikel Antonio slip through the net, and he's opted for Jamaica when he's now stuck with a fading, aging Harry Kane, who limits the way we can play as an England setup. And if I was Southgate, I would be pleading with Mikel Antonio to actually change his mind, suddenly discover that he's, he's as English as, I don't know, Stilton and Port or whatever it may be, um, and declare for England again because he's playing really well. And, and, I, and for years, I always subscribed to the theory, you know, the Brian Clough theory, if a player can't you know, trap a ball by the time he gets to him, he can't teach him. Yeah. Um, well, I've got to say, under David Moyes and the current coaching staff, Antonio looks a completely different footballer. He really does. And there were two or three things today. One occasion in particular, he brings a ball down off his chest, 
with the player all over him. Onto his right peg, plays the subtlest touches, a two-yard pass, you know, towards his left to put a man into space. And you're thinking, if that if that was Didier Drogba, they'd be saying, well, that's that's part of the course for Drogba. Yeah. That's how good Antonio can be at moments. And we're lucky to have him. So, yeah, I'm a happy chappy tonight, I can tell you that. Well, well, listen. I mean, we we just before you came on, we look 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 at this this sequence: uh, Newcastle two, West Ham four, Southampton nil, West Ham nil, Dinamo Zagreb nil, West Ham two, Manchester United nil, West Ham United one, Leeds United one, West Ham United two, Everton nil, West Ham United one. Uh, six away games, five wins, one draw. Is this the best season ever to be an away season ticket holder? Um. It need to go some to be 15, 16, I think. I think we had a couple of good good runs there. I remember um, winning away at the City of Manchester Stadium where it was like the Alamo for about 70 minutes. Um, you know, we won away at Anfield that season. So, you know, I think, I think not quite, but it could get there if we go to those grounds and pick up points again. Um, so it's just a great time to be a West Ham United supporter because at the minute... Yeah. David Moyes is getting the absolute maximum out of quite a small squad. And yep. we, we genuinely we can't ask for more than that, surely. Um, you know, he's, 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 he's you know, for, for, for all the sort of talk about who Newcastle are going to get and, you know, assuming they're part company with Steve Bruce and things like that, I, I generally think we've probably got the best performing manager in the league at the minute, because Pep Guardiola, I'm not being funny, but if you've got a billion quid of players on your books, you should be winning every week, and it should be three and four and five nil. If you're Jurgen Klopp, and you've got, you know, Firmino, Salah, you know, Jota and all the rest of them up top, well, you should be winning every week. Yeah, you know, four and five nil, and generally they do. If you are David Moyes, and you've got a converted wide midfielder playing as your only striker, um, then actually, the fact that you're winning away from home every week, that makes you a pretty damn good manager in my books. And uh, yeah, I think very, very happy indeed on the road at the minute. Yeah, um, I can imagine. I can imagine. It's, it, it makes these, I mean, what's this, a four-hour journey to, to, to Goodison Park? It must make it um, all the more enjoyable driving home, one, one would assume. One thing's for certain, had they got a last an equaliser or something the journey would have taken twice as long you know it's one of those <laughs> um, but I can now yeah. contemplate for the next three and a half hours is it going to be Chinese is it going to be Indian is it going to be a kebab or will it be a pizza you know <laughs> yeah. how about a pole and KUMB yeah what should there I have go. for dinner something like that there you go but, um, let us know no, let us know on the live chat yeah um, what should Pinky have? You've got plenty of time to, to, for him to think about. As you said, another uh, 210 minutes or so to go before they uh, get back to uh, deepest, dark, darkest Essex uh, from Merseyside. But um, uh, we, we, we're going to wrap it up there anyway, uh, Pinky, to, to allow you and the guys there to, to chat more about the game. Um, Tottenham have equalised, by the way, at St James's Park. It's one all there at the moment. Um, final word, please, gentlemen, on what we've seen today. Everton nil, West Ham United won. West Ham back up to sixth in the Premier League. Level on points with Everton. Level on points with Manchester United. Only five points adrift of uh, the current league leaders at the moment. Rio, um, last word on what you've seen. Uh, what was an incredibly bright opening... A uh, couple of little things marred the game for me. Uh, Antonio getting booked for what was deemed a dive, which I, I'm still not convinced by. Uh, Thomas Suchek's facial injury. I've actually just met, WhatsApped you the picture on, so you can uh, peruse that at your, at your leisure. Thank you. Um, again, which looked very deliberate, but you do not go to places like Goodison twice in a calendar year and win. It's taken 90-odd yeah. years for us to do that. Yeah. It's a ground I have particularly bad memories of visiting as a visiting supporter because I don't think I've ever pulled off a result there. I think barely one goal. Um, I'm just delighted for the likes of Pinky. The other supporters have gone up there, Chalks. We've gone and absolutely smashed them today. Not smashed them in terms of playing them off the park, but we smashed them in terms of negotiating a really, really tricky away day and we come away with a win. And um, 
I, I'm just absolutely delighted. As a West Ham fan, I'm just so delighted with, with what we've done today. It wasn't the glossy, polished performance, but it showed grit. It showed early promise. We stuck at it. Uh, and I still think Jordan Pickford's probably moaning now. So I'm just delighted about that even more. <laughs> Uh, a different kind of West Ham we saw today. I just looked at the picture you've WhatsApped what's to me, actually, and uh, I think it's quite apt for this time of year, what with Halloween coming up right now. In fact, I thought it was Ian Dowie I was looking at, first of all, but uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty nasty what, uh, what he's got there. I'm sure there'll be uh, repercussions. Um, Pinky, final word on uh, what you've seen today, live uh, from Goodison Park. A comprehensive, hard-fought victory that, that not many teams are going to go to Goodison and come away with all three points this season. Um, and it's exactly the sort of place, if you have genuine aspirations to be in that top five, six clubs, that you've got to go to the likes of Goodison and come away with all three points. Um, really good win today. Very, very happy. And I'm in particular, I'm impressed with the way that Declan Rice is gradually turning into a tall Tom Cruise. Um, if you look at him, you know, I'm thinking Tom Cruise round about, you know, his, his, his mid-20s. Declan Rice is now starting to look like him. And uh, <laughs> today wasn't mission impossible, but it was certainly mission difficult. But uh, on 90 minutes, it was absolutely mission accomplished. So well done to West Ham today. Beautiful. Poetic, in fact. What a way to end. Tottenham have just scored again at St. James's Park. It's all gone very quiet in the in the Newcastle ends. Um, that's it uh, for, for us today on the KUMB TV um, Eyes Up Mother Brown stream. It has finished Everton, Neil West Ham United won the Hammers winning a fifth away game this season. Still yet to be beaten on the road. Five wins and a draw in, in all competitions. Absolutely incredible stuff. And 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 to, uh, as Rio said, uh, you know, the just reward for these guys who, who go in week in, week out, been doing it for years uh, for little reward and are now finally getting um, to see a West Ham team that's deserving of that kind of support, quite frankly. And uh, it's uh, it's absolutely fantastic. The Hammers back up to the six in the Premier League. Um Back into uh, the Europa League on Thursday against Genk. And then it's uh, some team called Tottenham, who we've just mentioned a few moments ago uh, at the London Olympic Stadium next weekend to see if we can carry on uh, this return to form. Uh, thank you to everyone who's joined me on the live stream today, to, to Rio, uh, who's been uh, with me from the start, to uh, the Thrower family, to the Chalks family, all of whom have made an appearance, to Pinky and the and the boys there, uh, making the journey back uh, from Goodison Park. Have a safe trip, fellas, and... Uh, um, we'll let you know what so you can have for your dinner uh, a little bit later on. Um, that's it. We'll see you. Oh, and of course, thank you to all of you who have joined us on the live stream and contributed to the show. Uh, thank you to thank you to everyone for uh, sticking with KUMB. Get on the forum a bit later. Join us on there and let us know what you thought of the game. There'll be plenty, of course, to talk about. Uh, that's it from us. Uh, West Ham, another win. Great stuff. Um, it's getting an, almost a little bit boring, isn't this? Winning every week. It's, it's, it's quite uncanny. Still, still, no, it's not, is it, Rio? Not at all. Not at all. But I'm still trying to get to grips with it. Um, unheard of. Uh, great stuff. This is the new West Ham, and we're all absolutely loving it. Until next week. Right, so we're here in the offices of a late, late show with the host of a late, late show. James Corden. Hi. Big West Ham fan. Yes. <laughs> and big knees up, Mother Brown, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm regularly on the general discussion page there's always someone who's got some information so I love it yeah, yeah. it's great yes it's Find excitement them. surrounded by imminent disappointment <laughs> that's what it that's what it mostly is get on the forum at kumb.com come on you irons <laughs> <laughs>